Let's now get into some grist for the mill with Ramdas. I'd like to read the opening comment shared by Ramdas in 1976 that's in the book to kind of set the stage. Ramdas shared, The Dharma belongs to no one. Teachings about the Dharma come now through one person and now through another. What is contained in this book certainly did not originate with me. It is part of a river that flows through me from my guru, teachers, parents, past incarnations, and life experiences. As I read this manuscript, I can feel in the turn of a phrase or an image the intimate presence of my guru and one or another of my teachers. Their very real contributions to this book are warmly <clears throat> and gratefully acknowledged. May this book serve as an expression of appreciation for their teachings. My thanks also to Stephen Levine, co-author, whose sensitive poetic collaboration made the words come to light as I heard them but, not, but could not quite speak them. Shanti, Ramdas, New York City, 1976. Ramdas, if you would, share with us your general thoughts about Grist for the Mill and your friendship and collaboration with Stephen. <coughs> Grist for the Mill. Uh, all of the talks in the 70s were culled in this and there were I secrets and secrets oh dear oh dear um, Working with Stephen is, he's a, he's a poet, and words come out poetically, and, and he's a mystic, and we had a mystical experience when, when Wrist for the Mill uh, was produced. Um, and we're put the words together, and we were the the, the 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 words should not overshadow what's behind the words. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful book, and It's dated, but so am I. <laughs> so, uh, that's about all. Okay. Ron, let's just go through a, 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 a few questions uh, from the, uh, about the book. Uh, in the book, there's a passage where you say, once a being has awakened and is aware of their predicament, then one style of life isn't that different from another. It's all grist for the mill. Can you tell us about seeing everything as grist for the mill? And how do you put that in action? Well, all your life or your incarnation All of it, all of it are stepping stones to God. You look, you listen, touch, feel, tongue. The hard parts will grist and the, and the positive ones, grist. <coughs> it, 
it's as if you had the witness witness in your chest and witness in your soul and this witness the whole melodrama you witness the whole melodrama witness the the what goes on in your brain oi boy yeah and so you come upon something somebody you don't like their actions and witness that don't likeness and witness witness that w w it'll take you back to love to love to love to love And that the down here in the witness, the down here in the witness, the soul is not in your heart. The heart goes through to the to the soul your soul soul encompasses you you are your soul you are your soul you are your soul and so you you getting enlightened you break through into that plane of consciousness plane of consciousness in the book Ramdas and you've you've uh, you've alluded to this now with what you were just sharing uh, but there are stories that reveal uh, these different planes of reality these different planes of consciousness. How do how do these planes affect us in daily life? Well, there's the ego, 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 the who we think we are. That's one level. One level is stepping kindly on the earth. And one of the, that's the first level, is your relationships your body all those th all those things and the the um, soul level the individual soul level and then the Atman level, the third level. The third level has God, Guru, and Self. 
in in a mixture that that from that from the inside of you and me is the wisdom of being everything everything and it's peace and it's joy and it's compassion and consciousness and love that that's those two planes graduate from one to two oh the world looks different if you put uh, glasses on that you glasses the uh, love glasses you got oh that's so so juicy so juicy so juicy any more questions <laughs> uh, well there are uh, Ramnas um, when we spoke earlier there's this next question which, which is about when you return to India after having been away for three years um, we're going to read a, a little segment from the book here you'd been away from India for three years and Be Here Now ha was just about to come out and you were in the book says I was pretty freaked out by how much I was lost in the world. I went running back to Maharaji in India. When I arrived there, he asked me, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm not pure enough to do whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing. I, I, I said, I'm not pure enough? Yeah. Yes. I don't even know what it is, but I know that I'm not pure enough to do it. And Maharaji hit you on the head, pulled your beard, and said, you will be. And for a year and a month, I followed him around India, and every time I'd go to see him, he'd throw me out. He'd let others stay with him for months, but I'd come and he'd say, Jao, go away, go to Delhi, go here, go there. I had many adventures, and each time I'd come back and I'd say, Maharaji, you promised you'd make me pure enough. And he'd just laugh, or he'd say, you will be. Finally, I was being thrown out of India by the Indian government because of visa problems. Now let me explain. When I got to India that time, Maharaji said, how long, or uh, Maharaji said, how long do you want to stay? I said, I don't know. I, I want to stay forever, which wasn't really true, but you can only take so much dysentery. But I thought I should say it. <laughs> and he said, uh, how about March? Now this is February. And I said, you mean a month? Maharaji said, all right, a year from March. <laughs> so it just turned out that it was exactly a year from March when the Indian government threw me out. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see no obvious cause and effect between Maharaji's prediction and the action of the Indian government. But once you've begun to see how the game works, you wouldn't trust anybody as far as you could throw them. <laughs> you don't even know who works for whom anymore. And it's not even done on this plane. That's what's so bizarre about it. So, Ram, just share a little bit of your thoughts about your recollection of those incidents. Uh. He, he was a, a joker, <laughs> a rascal, a real rascal, a real rascal, and 
I, that's just the way he did it. March, 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 and that's the. And then he, 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 he forced the India government to, to, to get me out of India. Huh. Pure enough is when I came back from the first trip. I had a message uh, 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 the for the West, and I told them, told them about him and about India. But all the time, I could feel my ego knocking to knocking at my door, and my ego doing its work, but it wanted power. It wanted power, and. And I could see the way I would, the, the way I would uh, do gigs, and I just attracted f f from this, and attracted for that, and this, and there was an ice cream cone, and. I, Every try, every everything, everything, everything was an ice cream cone. <laughs> and by the time I got to India, I was sort of, sort of a yogi. But a, but a, an impure yogi. And I, and I got into Maharaji's field, and I thought, this is this is the field that I'm going to express in the West, and. And I can't even get this as a this as an instrument for uh, that melody. And this instrument just pure. And he said, he said, turn around. I turned around and he said, he said, luckily, he said, I don't see any impurity. <laughs> I was turning around and turning around. <laughs> and he said, go. And then I didn't, I didn't, I would, I wish I would say this, that was the end of my impurities. But now I'll tell you, there, they have stick to, to, stick to me. Yeah. So I'm an impure instrument. 
that's where I am. Yeah. <laughs> so when you came back from that uh, time in India, Ramdas, things really started to uh, accelerate with your teachings. Uh, Naropa with uh, Trunk Rinpoche, and, uh, and then a couple of years before this uh, book came out, uh, you had some experiences uh, with a spiritual teacher in Brooklyn named Joya, and it's it's out it's spoken about in the book, and of course uh, egg on my beard, which was the really uh, yoga journal article that was very candid about the experience that you had there. But when you look back on that today, how does that relate to grist for the mill? Well, it certainly, it certainly was grist. <laughs> it were, was grist. Uh, Joya was... Ma Joya. Um, she was a trip. She was a... a, a, um, a holy woman from Brooklyn and Hilda, a holy woman from, oh, I remember that. Um, it's a whale. Uh, I was in a, a hotel, uh, a motel, uh, in in uh, New Jersey or Pennsylvania, and um, I, I fell asleep. I uh, sleep in the bed. And I wakened. There was, there was a person sitting on the edge of my, the, uh, the uh, edge of my bed. And who was it? But Maharaji. I guess it was a, a vision, a vision. And she, he said, you, I, I was then on the way from Naropa to my parents' uh, a summer house, and then say goodbye to them, and then I would go to India. And that, me. And the 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 the, the living the <sighs> Maharaji then said, and I can't say he said because it, it, it wasn't for the mouth. I get yes. Um, you don't have to go to India. Your teachings will be right here. And then he disappeared. The next time, uh, next um, day, I was in uh, in. Um, in New York, and I, I was in my chiropractor, and um, he left me a room that a, a telephone in it, and I called Hilda, this holy woman, 
and she said, oh, I'm so happy you, you called. There is a woman, uh, a woman from Brooklyn. Uh, she's a very holy woman. And I'd like you to meet her. And um, I said, I would be happy to meet her. And the next day we went out to Brooklyn and we went to a house that looked like Well, it looks like a mafia scene. And then when there was nobody in the house, she said, she must be in the basement. We went down to the basement, it's dark, except for about 200, 200 candles all around the room. And right in the middle of those candles, she sat. She was, she was Kali-esque, Kali-esque, long black hair, red nails, red lipstick. She was in meditation and Hilda said, go, go in front of her and she'll speak to you. So I looked at her and she she opened her eyes and she said what the fuck are you doing here uh. and I, there wasn't the, the spiritual thing but I she said there's this guy here. Uh, there's a blanket over there. He's sitting in a blanket. It's he, if he, if he, 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 he's yours. Get him out of here. So I couldn't see anybody. I saw her. And then she said, she said to her, to somebody in the, in back of her, she said, would you keep quiet? What's your name? Padma Sambhava? I said, holy mackerel, she, the whole, the whole Mishpacha. And I then uh, withdrew. <laughs> I withdrew. And Hilda said, Well, why don't we three? Uh, teach together. And this is the night before the, 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 the night before Maharaji has said you have teachings 
and I and I was in the, at the time at the time I pictured myself as a homosexual and I feel, felt that that skewing of my personality would affect my teachings teachings uh, tr spiritual teachings and here was a woman is and she wow it must be this woman right just for my teachings and so we started to teach together and and we we a little hanky panky yeah I didn't the 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 homosexuality didn't um, go away, but but I found that I was bisexual. That's what I'm talking bisexual because partly because I come from my soul. And the soul has no sex. So, how, uh, how about that? <laughs> That's amazing sharing, Ramdas. Thank you. There's obviously more to the story of the, which can be read in <laughs> yeah. Chris for the Mill. <laughs> so we'll pull up from there. Um, uh, wait. Let's a, a reflect of, of Joy now. She, le she w left New York and uh, she had a, a, an ashram in um, Florida, and she uh, she was curing uh, numbers of AIDS patients and people with bad illnesses, and um, uh, she cleaned up her act. I think it. it First, first was her her background and her and her spiritual got all mixed up and very quickly she she parsed that out until the the the, the um, spiritual part existed that without uh, without the Brooklyn person yeah I should knock Bro Brooklyn <laughs> for you and uh, well 
we won't knock Ruffin. She had her she had her own grist for the mill. Um, but you know this leads us run us to uh, uh, maybe just uh, some thoughts about the judging mind. <clears throat> uh, what is what's an ideal way to deal with the judging mind? And when something like you know Brooklyn or whatever it may be, and there's you know maybe some judgment around that, what's what's a good way to deal with that? Well, I uh, I stay in my heart and stay in my soul and and I stay with the witness the witness of my mind and my mind is doing the judging and I I look I look he's judging He's judging, and the judgments usually are coming out of fear. Fear. The general, you don't, you don't have a, 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 a. You're making a. You're. You yourself are not. Competent. Competent. Hmm. But that, that's judgments of, of the people. Uh, and you say it, uh, the judgments of other people that it's it's judging you about that thing that's judged. Yeah. And I just witness it and then boy, he's got a long way to go. Oh my goodness. He's judging, 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 judging. Judging is judging as a power a power trip, a power trip, and I got down with love. Love erases that thing. It erases all the judging. Even the judging of, I love that, I don't love that, uh, that's judging. That's judging. It's all lovable, lovable. Me too. <laughs> Ramdas, there's. Uh, it would almost be an injustice not to go down this road about uh, be because of your work with Stephen, and because of his the collaboration that led to Grist for the Mill, without having at least a comment or two about uh, being with uh, dying people and family members of dying people. There's a, a portion of the book that talks about how being with dying people is an opportunity for awakening. And can you share some thoughts about that, please? Well, when when we, we uh, sadhana goes from the goes from the ego to the soul, that's what our sadhana is. Ego, then down to a, a, another plane. 
Now if you analyze or spend time with bedside with dying people, you see they go from this and this and this. In fact, they are identical, identical. And um, they start out, doctors, save me, save me, save me. Uh, bring them family. Uh, the pictures of, uh, I want to be uh, music and things on my dying. And then after a while, Wow. Wow. Oh. Ooh. And you know they're they've crossed the crossed the the barrier from one plane to another plane. They have gone to Soul Land. Soul Land. The bells are ringing. Soul Land. <laughs> Soul Land. And sitting by a, a, a dying person is. taking you in real, truthful terms to, to, to your soul, to your soul. In, in fact, if you sin, sit by dying people, your, your, you should have been identifying with your um, soul, yeah. so that the you can the trip of dying. They can she you can accompany the person. Not too far, but. Wonderful round us. If you would, uh, would you be willing to lead a, a, a loving awareness meditation that, uh, that might be useful when you're with someone who's dying and to keep yourself from getting in the way? Loving awareness. I, from here to here, you start out from here and say, I am loving awareness. And the loving awareness is down in your heart. Your heart's area, not your heart, your heart area. And if you want to, I, the, Take a finger, and it, it, in the middle of your chest, and that's where the the entrance to the to the soul is, and it it becomes a new identity for you. I am. I am loving awareness. 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 
I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving awareness. I am loving Who are you? Loving awareness. But be careful. If somebody on the street says, who are you? You never say loving awareness. You better give them your name and that this, this secret name is secret inside you. I am loving awareness. And then you open your heart and the, the, it, it's like your ocean, your, your, your swimming in the ocean of love. Ocean of love. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rambas.